Hi everyone. So today I want to show you something that you're probably familiar with. Um, if you're not, then I'm very surprised by that because I'm sure most of you have played a video game or two in your lifetime. What I'm showing you here are some familiar sprites from the original Legend of Zelda, my favorite game of all time. These are 8-bit sprites and they have this sort of stair steppy quality to them. When you zoom out, you know, they don't look quite as pixelated. There's some charm to be found in pixel art, uh, and I think that it's fun to create things like this. So that's what today's session is going to be about, at least in part. Uh, the first half of what I want to show you today will be a process for creating a pixel creature, pixel character. Th then after that, I'm going to show you something else. I was trying to think of what I could create something that was pixelated and had these hard edges but could still be readable. Because uh, you end up having to really simplify things down to their bare essentials and still you know, still retain some, some sense of the symbolic nature of what it is that you're trying to communicate. It's challenging to do when you're limited. I'll show you what I did here. I wanted to do a fiddler crab. So I found a, an image online, one that was uh, free for reuse with modification and I'm going to use this as my design template or as my reference for what I want to do. And I, I sketched him first. I did a little sketch to kind of figure out where everything would be. Just looking at the basic shapes. How can I simplify this guy? So I did my sketch of him and I wanted to simplify him down to basic components, basic shapes and forms. So that's what I did with the pen tool, with the shape tool, with the elliptical marquee tool, with the um, rectangular marquee tool, just overlapping these different shapes uh, in order to figure out the structure of my, my crab. And then once I'd done that, since I had them in separate layers, I was able to do that select where we would you know, select an area with the marquee tool and use the wand to do the, the subtraction so that it would clamp the selection to the exterior edge of whatever shape that I was trying to fill and I filled them with colors uh, so I got this. Uh, this was my eventual vector version of my fiddler crab here and I could take him further I could do some some toning and add some highlights in his eye like there's little specks of highlight or something but you know for my purposes this is as far as I needed to take it in order to see what it would look like with hard edges and sort of simplified. Once I've done that and stylized him. I dragged him over into a new project window and you can see this one has a grid on it. I'm going to show you how to create that. And here's my little pixelated version of that that crab. I pulled him over here and then I actually zoomed in and I used the pencil. It's a tool we haven't used and it's at one right now because I was doing this by the pixel and I zoomed in and I kind of hardened some of these edges and I even made a little environment for him to run around in by the ocean. There are steps to be taken to do something like this and this is what we're going to do. We need to determine what it is that we want to turn into a pixel creature. We want to do something simpler than the crab. The crab had a lot of moving parts. Perhaps we should go to Google and think of a creature that we would like to draw, an animal we'd like to draw. I'm going to do a frog, since before I showed you that, that vector frog, we're going to do a frog. We're going to go under Images, Tools, under Usage Rights, labeled for reuse with modification. I'm going to with this one for reference. I'm going to pull him over and blow him up a little bit so I can see him. We can arrange two up vertical. Then you can use your move tool, just plop him right down into your current project window. You can transform this so I can see it a little bit better. Now I need to determine how many different parts there are to this frog. And I like to do this with the brush. I like to do a lot of stuff with the brush. It's kind of my go-to tool. I'm going to make it pretty small. I do down in the two, three range, something like that. My opacity is 48. I'm going to bring it all the way up for now. And I'm going to make it a color that's very 
visible. So we're looking at the frog here. There's something I noticed about my brush that I don't like. I want to be able to see it better. So every time I go over this, because my brush tip is so small right now, it's hard to see it. So here's something that you could do. Go under preferences, go down to where it says cursors. The standard looks actually like a brush shape. So I'm going to switch to that and see now I can see my brush better. Sometimes that's the preference. Some people prefer to be able to actually see the size of their brush. But if I know what the setting is, I'm okay with that at least for now. Uh, but I'm just going to come in here and look at the generalized shape of this. He's got a big eye here, got the bulge for the eye there. That's where his nostril is going to be. His body is like a big lump ovular shape. I like that his arm up to his elbow is kind of small and curved back and he's got this like these like Popeye forearms. They're real big and exaggerated. That's fun to draw. It'll be fun to be fun to pixelate and turn it into a creature. Going around very loosely tracing and also taking some liberties. Now his back legs are folded up. So you've got this part, that's his haunch that's attached to his body. And you've got this part of his leg as well. And then you have the foot underneath that comes all the way up. It has those little sticky toes on it. I'm going to exaggerate those. And then the leg that's back here curled up is doing the same thing. But we can't see the toes on that. They're kind of concealed behind everything there. So there you can see there's like a basic outline for the frog. This over so I can see it better and I'm gonna invert the color on that so it's a little darker easier to see so now I see the separate components I can actually break this down and create like a vector version of this frog and I would want to start with the largest mass of the body which would be this oval so I'm going to do that with an elliptical marquee tool. I'm just going to make an oval shape. So I've got my ants marching. Now I can go up here and go edit stroke. It'll be based off of my brush, black, 10 pixels. That's good enough. Looks good. Deselect, transform, command T. Put it at that slight angle that I see here. Also tapers and has like a warp to it. So let's transform it a little bit. Let's distort this. Let's make one end wider. So we've addressed that, now we got to think about the head. And the head's like a weird shape, it's not, it's not really a circle, not really an oval, it's, it's like several different shapes on top of one another. How can I figure that out? I'm going to put one, I'm going to hold it in the spacebar so I can move it and get it where I want it to be. And I want to do add to shape, which I've already got that selected up here in my options bar. It's the two overlapping squares there. That way I can add to this shape just by clicking another section, like so, for the, the cheek there. Same with the eyeball. I'm going to move that up into the proper position. There we go. And I'm also going to do this in a separate layer. Control, stroke, 10 pixels. So now I can move this down. I want to put it so that it's overlapping this shape. And I need to make it bigger. Because look how big this is. The, this, the jaw kind of hangs out right over top of this part of the body. It is at a slight angle. It does seem like it tapers a little bit, maybe even. Maybe we even need to skew it just slightly. I'm also noticing that that bump doesn't quite line up with the way I had it, so I'm just going to adjust that using the smudge tool real quick here. I'm going to come back over to my elliptical marquee tool, and I'm going to put in I'll put in a big round eyeball right there. 
So before I take this any further, I'm going to use my eraser to remove some of what's behind here. So I've got that part of his face taken care of. Now we need to address his forearm, this area here. I actually want to simplify this a little bit, so I'm going to move my head and body together. Now they're one shape. Creating a new layer using the pen tool, and I'm actually going to come up here and follow the path. I've got this stroke path. Use the brush, hit return. Got that. Let's do another one attached to it. I'm going to start at the elbow, down to here, curve it a little bit, curve to here, another curve to the wrist, and it's going to curve inward here. So I'm going to stretch it a little bit, holding control, click, stroke path, hit OK, hit return. Let's move it where we'd like it to be. Down here, and we also need to make it bigger. By comparison, it's it's pretty big in relationship to the frog's head. It comes out to there. At a slight angle. That looks good. You could jump back to your eraser and remove that line. See there. Maybe you don't like this. Maybe you want this to be a broken line just to show indication of the elbow or the fold in the arm. That's fine too. So now let's address that back leg. Do that with the pen again. Although well, this looks like it could be like two stretched out overlapping ellipses. I'm going to do this in one fell swoop. Okay, there's one of the major lines there that I want to show. Stroke path, turn. Okay, I'm going to come in here. Might as well just put those toes in and see how it looks. Doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to cut it out, paste it into its own layer. But that's something I neglected to do. It's not in its own layer. Now I've got a hold of it. I'm going to move it back here. And I'm going to free transform it as well. I need to angle it a little bit. I'm going to get it real close to the back of this forearm because it does overlap that big toe a little bit of my picture. And I'm just going to stretch it out. There we go. Coming back to this layer, grabbing my eraser, and I'm going to remove what I can see through the legs here. Jumping back to my pen tool. Again, I'm using the pen tool for this because I want to have nice, sharp edges. Sketching is, is not always going to get you that. Okay, so that looks like I've covered the whole thing there. I'm going to get my stroke path in, and I'm going to select it. With the wand, cut it, paste it into its own layer again. Use the move tool to put this back behind him and resize it so that I get his legs to be about the same size. I'm have to transform it a little bit. That's pretty close. That's good. Alright, so now I just gotta take care of these hands. Of course, the pen tool is great for any kind of strange shapes. You just gotta be patient as you work your way around them. Get the full shape on that. Make that in a separate layer. We're gonna cut it, paste it. 
move it into place down here. Make sure we make it the right size. Pretty big. Just kind of line it up with that wrist there. Then I'm going to come up here and do one more. Come up and work your way around your shape with the pen tool. Got it. Stroke path. Turn. So I'm going to cut it, paste it, move it where I want it. It's like right underneath his face. Thumb. I'm looking at the negative shape. Make this shape so it can be transformed. That's about the right size. So now that I've got all those disparate parts, to make sure I know what layer is what here. That's my sketch, that's my photo. I'm going to merge these physical layers into one unit. Now there's my frog, just to solidify all those lines a little bit. Let's see what happens if I make it. Six, uh, and I am going to rasterize that. Put it in empty layers so that I can come back in and clean up any areas, any leftovers, any spots I don't want, things like that. So now I can worry about if I want to add any other little bells and whistles to this to make it look more like this frog. Uh, he needs a nostril. Noticing he's got this little area of highlight and then the whole bottom of his eye is dark. So maybe I'll block that in just to have it. Maybe I'll add a secondary reflective part there in the front too. Extend these lines a little bit to show that that's the eye on the other side. Again, how far you decide to take this is always up to you. There's a lot of little noodling that you can do. I would put maybe like that for the arms. We'll segment the stomach area. Show sure that there's a different color there, maybe. He's got the indication of an indentation where his spinal column runs down the middle of his back. So you can put that in right there. So now that I've got my frog done, I need to put him into his own project window. And this time I'm going to work in pixels. I'm going to go 500 by 500 pixels. Resolution 300, create it, blow it up a little bit. Now whenever you're creating a pixel character, one of the most important things to do is create a visual guide for where your edges will be. And in order to do that, you need to go under View, Show, Grid, and you'll get a grid. Now the grid is customizable, similar to where I showed you where you could go into Preferences and change your cursor. This is also where you go for guides, grid, and slices. And you can customize your grid, which I have customized for there to be a grid line every one pixel. So this is a pixel grid. So don't forget, it's under Photoshop, Preferences, Guides, Grids, and Slices. And there's a lot of other things in here that you can do with the interface. You can use this to create your own keyboard commands. Um, but this is where you want to come to change your grid, Customize it to the size you want, type of line, color, everything. And that's how you get this grid. Now what's going to happen if I just drag this guy over there is he's going to be huge. So at this point, something I'm going to have to do. And I could save this if I wanted to so that I have my three different versions of my frog. But I don't, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually just going to crop him. 
I'm going to flatten the image and I'm going to change the image size. I'm going to change it to pixels. Remember we said that was going to be a 500 by 500 pixel square. I want him to be smaller. I want him to fit into the square. So I'm going to make him 200 pixels. And that'll change my height automatically uh, to reflect the proportions. So there, I've made him teeny tiny. And I can do window, arrange, two up vertical. Grab my move tool. And drag him right over here into my image space. Close that. Like I said, you can save that if you want. And then from here, I could transform him. Make him as big or as small as I like. I'm going to zoom in to the pixel. And I can really see the edges on this. His edges are kind of soft. Now, if I want to come back in here and fix that, I can do it. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like once you pull him in to your pixel grid. So he's ready to be transformed into a pixelated character. And I'm going to do that in a separate layer. I'm going to use that as reference. And in fact, I could lower the opacity on him just so that it'll be easier to see what I'm doing here. And in this layer, I'm going to jump to my pencil tool. And this will happen pretty much automatically. It will create the edge that you're looking for. Now I may need to make this a little bigger. I'm going to set this at like 5 for the width of my pencil. And then I can just come in and go right over top of what I've already done. And it will lock to the edges of all these little squares. Now what we're creating here is more like pixel art as opposed to actual like a video game character. If we wanted to make that we'd have to zoom in all the way down to the pixel and make these lines much much thinner. But if I zoom in you can see the difference here. Here you have this kind of soft edge where it, it turns into a little bit of a gradient where it's gray and it's fuzzing out here. It's always going to snap to the edge of your pixel, which is what we want. You know, we want this to be a sharp image. We need it to snap to that grid line that we've created. I'm just going to follow along all the lines I've created. We're just making a little pixel critter here, pixel frog. And you can do whatever kind of character you want. You can do animal, you can do some kind of monster, like an alien, you can do your own version of a video game character you really like, you can do yourself, do like a self-portrait, maybe you have a game you really like and you want to make yourself into a character from that game, maybe make yourself into like a Final Fantasy character, you know, a Pokemon character, uh, one of the villagers from Animal Crossing, or something like that. That would be pretty neat. You just have to use some reference for that to see how their pixel art is done and then create your own version of it. I'm going to zoom out on that so I can see it. And at this point, if you want, you could dump that layer from behind and you have your, your pixel frog or pixel creature, whatever you're doing. You want to sure up some of the edges if there's anything that looks like it's not dense enough. That would be something to do now this a little bit thicker of a line. Now I want to color them in. And of course you can do this by hand. You could color in each section a little bit at a time. And I need to pick a color. I pick my own color for this frog. A super bright green. And I'm going to do multiply on that. Coming back down to that background layer I created and deleting out sections in the top layer. Now I have some areas I could probably change some colors on here and I'm going to jump to my paintbrush for this. You could use the uh, the pencil, you can continue using the pencil if you want to. It doesn't really matter um, because at this point I'm just kind of filling areas in. Just making sure I have the right brush size. Make his 
his tummy yellow. A little variety to my frog here. Highlight in his eye is going to be white with a little reflective quality to it, and then I'm going to put some blue in there as well. Like reflect the sky. So I've got him all filled in. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to make an overlay layer, and I'm going to work work in some darks and lights. How much you can see of this, it's a little bit lighter than I'd like it to be because of how saturated that initial color was. Um, jump to some white, lighten up the front of his nose, his eyes here, the shoulder. I'm going to double up that value and see what it looks like. Yeah, it's too strong. So you can check that out if you want to, just see it without the uh, the line work. It does look like I've kind of created a little shadow underneath in there. Um, I'm going to unlock that background layer. Put a new one in there underneath. I'm going to merge my visible layers at this point. I'm going to use my wand actually to remove the background area so he's isolated and he's in an empty layer so I can plop something in there whenever I want to. You want to take this any further in terms of value, you could just always add another overlay layer. Take it one step further, it will get lighter as you go. See? Got the that light blue-green on top of what's there now. Darken some of these areas a little bit more. Just love using overlay. I think it's just such a cool blending mode for adding depth and expanding on the colors that you've already placed there. So there's my frog. I can transform him, make him as big or small as I want, depending upon what I'm going to do here in the background. I'm going to put him right here. I could sketch this separately, or I could go straight to my pencil just go in here and draw whatever it is that I want. He looks like he's sitting on a leaf, so I'm going to draw him on a leaf. Remember how we did this before using the rectangular marquee tool to select the wand to snap things down to their edges. I'm going to create a new layer, do an edit fill, I'm going to pick a color I like. I want it to stand out against him, so I'm going to do like a it's like purpley reddish color. OK, and turn that into a multiply blending mode so I can see my lines. Do another overlay layer on top of that so that I can brighten brighten my sun.
Your smudge tool or your eraser to kind of clean up your edges. Let's do a new layer and create a gradient. I'm going to make my gradient go from red to that yellow color. I'm going to stretch it all the way like that. Now let's just see how this looks. Let's see what it looks like if we do it with a different blending mode. We have a lot of different options here. Darken, multiply. I like how that stretches the color out a little bit. I'll drop the opacity just slightly. And yeah, that looks good. flatten my image and at this point if you wanted to you could try some different filters see if you like any of the filters that you could use on here but let's see what it looks like close up when we look at the pixels so you can see them all those nice hard edges maybe try doing your own one of these uh, don't neglect the details like I did I kind of this is kind of sloppy honestly for me I did this quick just to walk you through the process. If I were doing this, I would have done a sketch and worked on top of it, but there's some pixel art for you. Give it a shot, and then come back and watch the second part of this tutorial. All right? So what you're watching now is a sped up process, watching me do the sketch and then ink it, and then I'm gonna drag it over into a pixel grid. Um, but what I wanted to show you here is that I'm actually zooming in this time down to the very pixel, down to you know, the single squares, so that I can make this actually look like a pixelated video game character. The previous exercise with the frog it was, it was a lot thicker and denser. I wasn't focusing on each separate square. I was just kind of doing the pixel art as it was. Uh, I was just kind of drawing however I felt like drawing and however wide the lines ended up being all those black heavy lines that outlined everything they were more than you know one pixel or two pixels to create that edge so what you're watching now is a little bit more uh, to the tune of what a pixel character would be so check it out and try one of your own <laughs>